Hey guys, welcome to BSL Triple League Season 12. This is the first game of the winner's match between Sabbath, a.k.a. Turrets, and Ash Do Life. This is going to be... Is this on Shakur's Plateau? I should have checked the map before popping. This looks like Shakur's Plateau. It's possible that it is... No, that's Shakur's Plateau. Yeah. Anyway, game... The previous match I just did on Twitch was Do Life versus... Um, wow, I'm blanking already. Versus Baya. And I almost want to say it felt like there's a really heads up play for a moment. I'm not sure if it was intentional or not. But I think there was a moment where he intentionally, he had that initial marine grouping. I think he intentionally sacked the siege tanks and the marines to get mines out in position to deal with the Dark Templar. Which was a very heads up play. And honestly, I've seen, he, obviously, I should say where the players are. Bottom left hand corner, we have Sabbath as the pink Terran upper right hand corner. We have Do Life, who, you know what, I'm just going to say because of this wonderful color. <clears throat> I'm expecting him to get out of this match ahead of his opponent. So we'll see if he's the first one to advance to the round of eight. Out of group D. Anyway, um, feels like he's yeah got a solid amount of heads up play, very aggressive play style. I'm expecting that to continue. I, I will say that I've been switching to commentating these on my lunch break, basically kind of taking an hour in the middle of the day. So commentating TVT is, I think this is the first TVT I've done thus far in B-Cell. There's just been such a glut of Protoss that it has been unusual, uh, unusual to have a turn versus turn matchup. I'm actually going to walk back a statement I had said earlier where a lot of people, this was actually my point. I'm like, okay, when I was trying to learn a while ago, I'm like, I'm going to play Protoss because I feel like that's the furthest I can get with the least amount of time invested. I think I actually want to walk that back. I think all players should start as Terran because I think Terran builds APM and has kind of a straightforward play style where it rewards you for macro management, micro management, and kind of just sticking to a build order. Zerg has a little bit more trouble with that. You need a little bit more adjustment, empathy, things like that. Uh, Protoss, you have more of that cheesy, interesting stuff. But I think if you're really in StarCraft for the long haul, whether or not you're planning on switching to Protoss or Zerg uh, down the line, I do think that Terran kind of gives you some of those baseline, it's the harder race to play, I will say definitively. <clears throat> I feel like actually it's interesting when you think about the general like almost bell curve of who has an advantage at what stage. I definitely feel like Protoss has an advantage kind of in the midfield between like 1600 and like 2000 MMR, which is actually a, a wide space to play just because of the flexibility of that race and all the cheese you can uh, sneak out there. By the way, we see a refinery, no factory yet, and natural expansion being taken here. Opposite corner, we have supply depot, uh, barracks, and initial factory from Do Life. Sabbath is scouting the bottom right-hand corner. It looks like this SUV is going to come around, but I feel like Terran at a certain at the upper ends of that MMR, MMR between 1900 and 2000 once they've kind of they know how to deal with all of those cheeses it's kind of especially with the 2-1 build versus Protoss and m and once you get into that space where you can execute with all that medic marine player one SCV on gas by the way to go ahead and get that command center up I feel and is this marine going to get in the marine or sorry this SCV going to get in it's going to see that natural expansion up is actually going to walk in and see a complete lack of factory thus far Let's see if Do Life uses that information to respond. However, there is an SCV inside the base to get counter scouting information. Initial vulture being built. And Do Life scouting. Actually, he's going to sneak down, just grab a command center himself. SCV is already being transferred. So, a an early economic advantage to Sabbath. Anyway, point being, I guess what I'm saying is, is it feels like there's different points where each race has an advantage. I think at the very, very baseline level, Zerg has an advantage because Zerg has so many all ends you can do. Like, they talk about the classic Zergling rush, um, three hatchling, things like that. It's just very hard to deal with, very hard. I feel like Zerg should dominate Chobo League, is I guess what I'm saying, um, every time. Mostly just because it's just so difficult to deal with a lot of their early all-ins and all. Anyway, enough ranting about all this. Let's actually get into the game itself. Point being, if you're into StarCraft, go check out CPL and maybe think about starting as Terran. I'm wondering if I ever get, if I ever get time between... I'm kind of in that situation again where I have to decide. This is, I guess, the rant cast. It's going to be the rant cast here. I feel like if I ever get in a situation here where I have time where I'm not making decisions between, okay, do I commentate and stay sane? Or do I have time to play StarCraft? If I have like the open room to do that, I will maybe uh, dive into Terran a little bit here. Anyway, machine shop planting down second factory up. We do have that natural expansion being built Sabbath with at least a bit of an economic support. But vultures have managed to get to this natural expansion and they outnumber Sabbath's vultures two to one. Some SCVs trying to pull off the line. Nice defense. What a great surround by Sabbath. Pulling off that line and just using his own vulture and some battle SCVs to get him. He's maintaining the economic lead. He's got two factories down himself. Second vulture is out. The barracks are going to cross each other. Midfield. 
Do Life now has his natural expansion up, but that is that's a six SAV lead. A Goliath being built off the armory to follow this up. That's kind of an interesting play. Armory being canceled by Sabbath comparatively. So he was thinking about going armory, but canceled it. It looks like he wants to go ahead and get a third factory. And mine's being researched. So I think Do Life was expecting perhaps a vulture all in. And it looks like for a moment there, Sabbath was thinking that this is a bit, this is something that's really become more prevalent recently is the vulture all ends. We see Sabbath actually sneaking out with the vultures and Goliath can help with that because when you have sufficient Goliath, they can take down those mines as they're popping out. It looks like a siege tank and a Goliath going to go ahead and engage this. Sabbath now a little bit committed to this. He's got siege tanks, um, vulture mines are being produced. So a nice transition here by do life to get those Goliaths out. If he can just produce, what is it? Two or three Goliaths. Oftentimes that's all it takes to go ahead and pick off mines as they're being planted in sufficient numbers and go ahead and uh, apply kind of that counter pressure. He's with that single Goliath actually following this up with some additional vultures of his own mines are out third. So it's going to be three factory versus three factory potentially going to come down to micromanagement. But again, the economic advantage is in Sabbath's favor. Do life. However, with the degree of map control, has managed to take out a lot of these initial vultures as they just kind of wander around the map and do life again getting aggressive pressing towards this natural expansion they're gonna he's gonna be greeted by two siege tanks i don't think siege tech's been upgraded yet and a large amount of vultures as far as a, a positional uh, counter attack the vultures moving in though piecemeal and just dying to this attack force just ending up in unfavorable and you can just see how quickly those mines and actually just i like the combo of the goliath and the marine being sufficient to go ahead and take this out. And now do life in a strong position. Oof. Yeah, just one bad engage. All those vultures getting wiped out. And all of a sudden it was a Goliath, a Marine, two siege tanks versus two siege tanks on the front, plus a bunch of vultures able to get right into the natural expansion. So a quick win for do life with a bad engage and some follow-up pressure. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry for ranting for it feels like a good four minutes of this cast. <laughs> you guys can deal with it. We'll move on to game two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.